We're back in Greenville, South Carolina with President Trump and also we're joined by South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. Thank you both for being with us. All right, we've spoken some on the show tonight about the black and Hispanic vote, which seems to be trending more toward the Republican Party, specifically because of the America First agenda of President Trump. And this new Siena College poll is showing that President Trump has 41 percent of the Latino vote, 26 percent of the African-American vote. Um, what is he doing and what can he do more of to even expand that? Well, he's race? been very, very successful. When you look at the years when he was our president, we had the lowest unemployment rate in the history of the country for African-Americans, the first time under 6 percent because of Donald Trump. We had the lowest. I'm like a Southern preacher, so I got to stand a little bit. So we had the lowest Hispanic unemployment, the first time under 5 percent. Asians, first time under 3 percent. Women, a 70-year low overall population, 50-year low. And on top of that, who's the president who brought the most money in for historically black colleges and universities? Donald Trump. <laughs> who, who made... Who made the funding permanent for the first time? It wasn't Barack Obama. It wasn't Bill Clinton. It was... <laughs> actually, who signed the Opportunity Zone legislation bringing hundreds of billions of dollars into the poorest communities in all of our country? <laughs> success breeds success. 40% of African-American men now are looking at Donald Trump. Who trusts who trust this president with the border? Hispanics trust Donald Trump more than Joe Biden because the, they have common sense. On the issue of crime, Mr. President, uh, people think, oh, well, that's, it's, it's the economy of the border. But crime is an important issue for all Americans, especially inner city um, uh, underserved and underprivileged people yeah. from all backgrounds and ethnicities. But African Americans are, as you've talked about in D.C., you know, I'm from the D.C. area. It's just horrific what's happening to the people who deserve it least. We have to be very tough, and we have to respect our law enforcement, and we have to give them back authorization to act on our behalf. We have to. One of the things that I'm very proud of, and this was given through strength, well, some of the most conservative people wanted it, but a lot of liberals wanted it, too. And Tim was one of the people that really was pressing, and, and uh, his voice is very important to me, uh, criminal justice reform. We got that done, and a lot of the African-American population has never forgotten that. Opportunity zones, Tim came to see me about that. He said, I have an idea, and it's an idea that we've tested and all, but the problem is nobody could get it through. He came to me, I loved it. And I think it's the greatest economic development program that I've ever seen that nobody talks about. Absolutely. It's been so successful within the... You gotta have safety in these communities, though. <laughs> Um, something that you haven't talked a lot about, you came out strongly against the central bank digital currency, which yeah. would be a government-controlled yeah. digital dollar. Uh, China obviously has its own push in <laughs> the Chinese uh, digital currency. But isn't the next logical step for you to embrace Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin obviously is decentralized. The government can't get its hands on it. What about Bitcoin with all the young people, including African Americans, who are, are very interested in it? Well, a lot of people are doing it. I always liked one currency. I, could, I call it a currency. I like the dollar. But a lot of people are doing it. And frankly, uh, it's, it's taken a life of its own. You probably have to do some regulation, as you know. But many people are uh, embracing it. And more and more, I'm seeing people wanting to pay Bitcoin. And you're seeing something that's interesting. So uh, I can live with it one way or the other. I've always liked one really powerful thing, and that's called the dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President, one final, one final comment to the people here, the voters in South Carolina, but beyond, who are watching across the country, about what's at stake in this election coming up, given everything that you're facing. I actually think the life of our country is at stake. I think that this is the most important election we've ever had. I used to say that 2016, and I meant it 100 percent. This blows it away. We had bad borders in 2016, but nothing like. We had problems in 2016, but this is magnified times 10. We're going to lose our country. It's going to be a disaster, and we have to do something. And, you know, it's basically very simple. We're going to get back to 
energy, we're going to drill, we're going to get, we're going to take care of inflation. He caused inflation when he allowed energy to go through the roof because energy involves everything. If you're making donuts, if you're building buildings, if you're driving trucks, everything is powered in one form or another by energy. He allowed it to go from nothing to almost a hundred dollars a barrel. I had it down at thirty-five. Now LNG exports. LNG, he cut it out. I approved plants in Louisiana that were up for fifteen years. They couldn't get approved. I got them approved in twenty-four hours. Nobody could believe it. Ten billion dollar plants. So what I'm saying is we have a theme. It's called Make America Great Again. It's a, it's so simple. And when people ask me the question, and we're going to have inexpensive energy, that's going to help us get rid of this horrible inflation. You know, he really had 38 percent inflation. If you look at it over his term, it's 38 percent. Anybody that made anything, it doesn't matter, because the inflation was greater than whatever they made. We're going to get prices down. We're going to bring this country back, but we're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. And we can still do it. But soon we will never be able to do that, because it'll be too far down the line. One more question. When you um, are re-elected, might the first interview at the White House. <laughs> I think I'd do that. Yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.